How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and today we're going to talk about how to block robocalls. Obviously over the past few years they've been getting crazier and crazier. So we're going to talk about how you can mitigate it. Probably not remove 100% of the robocalls you get obviously, but hopefully like 99% of them will be gone at the end of this video. So that's what we're going to talk about different ways to do it. Now I'm going to be specifically mentioning stuff having to do with the USA and US carriers, but a lot of this will also carry over into other countries as well, so it should work. Now starting off, the first step, it's really obvious but I still have to mention it, and that is the do not call registry. So it's do not call.gov, this is for the USA, and obviously this is only only going to remove spam calls from companies that are following the rules in the first place. So any fraud or anything is clearly not going to be affected by this do not call list. But you can go on there and then any companies that are actually following the law hopefully will not be calling you. But even still this list doesn't apply to several other legal companies like political groups, charities, surveys. A lot of this stuff is super annoying and for some reason the do not call list does not apply to them legally. So it's something worth putting on because it's so quick, but just know that it's not gonna obviously do much, but it's still better than nothing. Of course, that's just for the USA. Your country might also have an equivalent of the do not call registry. So for example, in the UK, I believe it's called the Telephone Preference Service. I think you go on there and put in your phone number and maybe that will mitigate it. So you might just be able to go on Google and search your country do not call list and then see what comes up. All right, now next up, the next layer of protection is gonna be whatever spam blocking service your particular cell phone carrier offers. So a lot of carriers now have some proprietary app that they use. So starting off with AT&T, for example, there's AT&T Call Protect, which is basically just rebranded version of Haya, that's a third party service. They kind of use the same list, I guess. But with the AT&T Call Protect, there is a free and paid version. The free version is pretty much gonna do anything you need, like auto fraud and spam blocking. And then the paid version just gives you a little bit more, like for $3.99 a month, it's like enhanced caller ID, reverse number lookup, and then custom call controls which just lets you kind of categorize different, I guess, categories of spam, like if you want certain types, but really the free version is gonna do 99%. For Verizon, they also have an app called Verizon Call Filter, and this again has a free and paid version. The free version has spam detection and a filter, so again, that's pretty much all you need, but the paid version, which is like three bucks a month, also has like a personal block list, a risk meter, I don't think much of this is necessary, so probably just go with the freeze thing. For T-Mobile, they have something called Scam Block, which is not really an app, it's just something you enable in your account settings. And I believe this is free for pretty much all plans as long as it's post-paid. So it just kind of happens in the background after you enable it in your account settings. So you might have to download the T-Mobile account settings app first. And then Sprint has what's called their Premium Caller ID app, which is $3 a month, but this seems really basic and doesn't seem to even do as much as a lot of the free things do. So I wouldn't even bother getting this, maybe just get one of the third party apps we're about to talk about. And then of course, if you have a different carrier, especially if it's one outside the United States, you can probably just go on Google and search the name of your carrier and then call spam filter app or something like that. And it should come up with something if there is one. All right, now the third layer of protection would be an independent call spam blocking app. And there are a lot of these, and we can go over some of the most popular ones, talk about the differences. The first of these, which is really popular, is called Haya, and it has a both free and paid version, but the free version is gonna do pretty much everything you need. So this is gonna be able to block fraud and nuisance calls, obviously that's the whole point, and it also allows you to report fraud calls if it's not blocked, so you can kinda search for it and then write a report and possibly see what other people have written about a phone number. So this is also good if it's not not marked as spam and you're just kind of wondering what the phone number is and then a lot of people might be reporting oh they called asking for a survey or some nonsense like that it also has another feature which is pretty standard called neighbor spoof protection so what this basically does is when a scammer a lot of times they will spoof the first six digits of your phone number so that it looks like, oh, this kind of looks like my phone number, and then you're interested in it and you might answer it. So it'll just block any phone numbers that have the first same six digits as yours. And of course, if you have a contact in your contact list, 
that has that, it'll whitelist those. But 99% of the time, if you get a phone call that's like almost the same as yours, it's just a spam number. However, this does not always protect against certain trickier spoofers, and we will get to another app that will be able to cover that in a minute. And then for the premium version of Haya, it doesn't seem to really have that much more protection. It's three bucks a month, and really the only extra thing is you get faster updates like three times as often, and then premium caller ID lookup or something like that. So I don't know if it's really worth the three bucks a month. As a side note, there is another app called Mr. Number that I've talked about in the past, and they seem to have merged Haya and Mr. Number. So I don't think they're different at all. Mr. Number is basically just the equivalent of the premium version of Haya. It's paid only, but they're exactly the same, so you don't need both. All right, now the next app is called Nomo Robo, and it is a paid only version. It's about two bucks a month, and this works a little bit differently. Instead of just having a broad spam list, I don't know how the other apps work exactly, but how this one works at least is basically, it kind of crowdsources the spam list. So it takes a look at everyone using the app, and if a whole bunch of people start getting spam calls at the same time from a group of numbers or a certain number, then it will detect, okay, this is probably just a spam network calling people, and then it will pretty much automatically add those numbers to the list so that when it starts calling even more people, it'll be blocked by anyone using that app. So it's a little bit different as far as I can tell. Because it is paid only, I'd recommend maybe just getting this if the free version of Haya doesn't work, and then you can go and this might be a another step up, or at least in conjunction, you can probably use both. So hopefully this one will work in addition to the other one if it doesn't alone. And if those don't work, there is yet another app that works on an even different principle called RoboKiller. Again, this is a paid only app and it's about $4 a month or $30 a year, depending on the plan you pick. And how this one works is instead of doing the filtering on the device, basically you have it forward all your calls to their service. So it basically forwards the calls to the service and then they kind of do the filtering on their side. One advantage of this is that if it is confirmed to be a spam call, it will not even go to voicemail. A lot of the other apps, what happens is just the way that iOS works and maybe on Android, is that even if it blocks an app, it'll still forward that call to voicemail, but with this, it won't happen at all. And also another interesting, unique feature of this is because it's handled in their service side, they actually have what's called answer bots. So if it's confirmed to be a spam caller, you can kind of like choose a robot to talk back to the other robot and if it's a telemarketer it'll annoy him and stuff like that and you get a recording so a little bit more features but it does happen off your phone so if you don't like the idea of that then you might not want to use it so as far as the regular block list apps go those seem to be the most popular ones there's Haya again Nomo Robo and Robo Killer but again we did talk about how there are spoof neighbor numbers and those are a little bit harder to block because they aren't going to necessarily show up on any spam list because they're blocking your number and your number is obviously probably not going to be on a spam list and while i believe all of those apps do have a feature where it blocks numbers if it's the first six digits equal a lot of these new scammers have gotten wise to that and i've actually gotten several spoofed spam calls that have only copied the first five digits of my phone number so say my phone number is 555 one, two, three, five, 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 then they will start their phone number with five, 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 one, two, and then whatever, and then that won't get caught in the neighbor spoof filters and still get through. But there is an app that can block that. So on iOS, this app is called Wide Protect. It is a paid app, but it's only $3 one-time fee, so it's not a subscription, which is nice. And what this app does, it's really simple. It just creates a filter with a wild card of any phone number starting with whatever numbers you want. So in my example, if your number is 555, 123, whatever, you can simply add a filter for any number that starts with 555, 12, and then all those other numbers will get blocked even if it doesn't show up in one of those other paid apps filters. Now, Wide Protect is only available on iOS, but there is another app on Android that can also do starting with filters, and that is called Calls Blacklist. So that seems to be able to do the same thing, and I think it is free. So if you have Android, that should work as well. Now, here is one side note. If you're using iOS, something you might notice and I can explain, and that is whenever you use one of these apps, you have to go into the call settings in your settings and then allow these apps to manage your block list. And you'll notice that a lot of these apps have multiple lists. It'll be like 
Mr. Number Ohio 1, 2, 3, and even with Wide Protect, there's like 25 of them. And you're like, why are there so many? Why do I have to enable all of this? And basically it's because iOS only allows lists of two million numbers per extension, they're called. So if an app wants to block more than two million numbers, that's to create more than one of these entries. So for Wide Protect, for example, depending on how many numbers you filter out with this wildcard, it'll tell you how many of these you need to enable. So if you block the first five digits, I think it blocks like 200,000 possibilities. And it tells you here, you only need to enable the number one entry. And then I guess if you start blocking 50 million numbers worth, you're gonna have to enable all of them, but you don't have to enable every single one. At least for the Wide Protect app, the other ones I think you do need to enable them all. So hopefully if you're using one of these apps or several of them and you combine several of these techniques, then you should be able to block pretty much 99% of robocalls coming in the future. As far as I know, at least with iOS, there's no real way to block them from going into voicemail. You might be able to do that with Android. iOS just has restrictions on these. But again, what I would recommend is just kind of start going down the list as you realize, okay, this isn't working 100% of the time. I'll add on this new layer and so on and just kind of keep tacking on the apps as much as you're willing to pay for until kind of one of the nets catches all of them. If you have other suggestions for cool tricks you might have realized that I did not talk about, let us know down in the comments. And also be sure to check down there because someone might have left a suggestion that is actually useful and you might want to see that. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.